Hello guys and welcome back and today we're continuing our look at Synology's mobile apps. Now today we're going to look at Synology Drive. More keen followers of this channel, thank you so much for subbing, um, will know that I actually reviewed Synology's Drive application just over a year ago now. And I was quite impressed by the application, but little did I know that over the course of the next year, Synology's Drive application would become so, so pivotal to Synology's own brand. We've seen everything from that uh, file-on-demand streaming, better support of the client application with that new beta that was released, I think beta 2.0 or 2.5, I can never remember. Um, and Synology Drive has evolved into this behemoth platform. In fact, lots of people that have contacted me for the best way to sync synchronize their NAS um, by the in-network and the internet in the most streamlined and easy way using their own file serv services such as you know Finder on Mac or Windows Explorer. I've recommended Drive a number of times and it's just one of those places where unfortunately over the year there's been such evolution in Drive I have felt like Synology's Drive mobile application has been kind of left by the wayside. I mean there's loads of these applications here and for some reason I've done DS Finder twice on there which is always stupid but the reason we're going to focus on Drive today is I still believe it's one of the best applications from Synology even though it has been kind of overshadowed by both the desktop a client application and the one available via the graphical user interface in the likes of Chrome and other browsers. Now before we go any further it's worth highlighting just like I say in my other videos that we aren't going to be using the internet. We're using a network only access today and that is because the majority of users want to access their NAS via a closed network and when I did my recommendations and requests to you guys last month I asked you about these mobile apps, what you wanted, and let's face it, the stats were largely in favor of people wanting network-only access. So to show these applications at the very best they can be in a network-only environment without using internet access, that's what we're going with. It's worth mentioning I'm also using the Android application, which is available completely for free, and that Android application is also available uh, on iOS too. So let's go straight into the app. Now, straight away, it opens into team folders, which is the first thing I should probably mention straight off the bat on this video. There is, of course, uh, an app available for DSM. If you go into their app center, you can install Synology Drive on your Synology NAS, and you will get the very best out of this app if you install that application on your desktop platform. The reason being is Synology Drive serves two focus points. The first one, when it was first envisioned, was to become a one portal access and opening point of all of your files. So whether you were opening up a PDF, a Word document, a photo, a video, music, whatever, this one app is supposed to open them all because of its support from things like Synology Office and its own third-party media players, all built into one application. But over time, things have changed and it's become one of the best ways to create a synchronized storage environment. What that means is having a folder on your PC, Mac, Linux, whatever system you're using, and that folder in your own visible third-party structure is synchronized with a folder on the NAS, in this case, your team folders. And these folders synchronize with folders on one or more users' desktop environment, not in the browser, but on the actual desktop environment, and then creates perfect synchronicity. This competes very well with the likes of Dropbox and Drobo, I'm sorry, not Drobo, Dropbox and Google Drive, with the added advantage that whereas they rely on internet access and therefore will actually end up using a lot of system resources for that synchronization, these use network speeds, which mean larger abilities and speed to synchronize with, as well as keeping your files in-house. Now this functionality, as you can see, is supported in the mobile app. There's all the folders. And in fact, I have the same tiered folders um, on this NAS in three separate locations. As you may have read from these folders, RAID 0 BTRFS, RAID 1 EXT4, and SHR BTRFS, all of these are shared folders in separate storage areas of this NAS, the 620 Slim, for a future upcoming video where I'm going to compare SHR with RAID 1 and BTRFS with EXT4. But if we go into any of these folders here, let's uh, go down at the bottom to look at TV shows. And this, sh in theory, when I click any of these, it should play these files first time. So let's go with Peep Show because it's got such a great intro. And it played it straight away. Lovely bit of speed there. 
Definitely something a couple of the other NAS brands could learn from, the speed at which that was opened. And remember, this isn't a dedicated video player app. This is an app to open all kinds of files. And again, we can go for different viewpoints. We can sort by date and all that kind of stuff. The kind of usual ways you would expect to be able to operate with a NAS. And in fact, you can create folders from here and then those folder changes you make on this device you're using will affect the NAS. So say for example, we wanna create a folder, we'll call this folder test, click okay, and boom, we have a test folder. Next, why don't we upload a photo? I'll upload a photo of myself, let's have a look, and we can choose to use the camera or preset files. Let's go for taking a picture, get that turned around. And there we go, we've got that file. We get that, there's a picture of me in the soundproof safe, and there we go, there's our picture. And it's that straightforward. And yes, what is going on with my face? So, it really is that straightforward to add files and folders, as well as do recordings directly, video recordings that goes directly to the NAS and more. We can upload individual files and folders if we choose. So let's pick some random file from something that's on my NAS right now. Here's some pictures from earlier on. This me just got my hair cut, so we'll get that file uploaded. And boom, there it is. Let's have a good look at it. And there's Robbie's face. And it's that straightforward. So moving forward away from that, we can look at music files. So why don't we go to a music file here. Let's go for the London Philharmonic and let's go for Zelda. This opens it up here. And again, I've purposely kept the music low and away from the mic, but lovely straightforward audio there. Get rid of that, close that, and we can go back to it. And again, we can upload files and folders at all times if we so choose. Next, or actually photos we've already done. And there's just different cars of, kinds of files and photos inside this device that we can play with. And that's kind of the whole point about this. We will be doing a separate video on Synology's Office application. And my drive is kind of the main core directory of Synology's drive application. And of course, the team folders are ones we share with other people. And shared items is if you want to make one of these files or folders shared with other users. So let's go for a photo. Let's go for uh, Pride. I always like using this particular album. And straight away, another thing that I don't think gets highlighted enough in this application, and I don't think I highlighted this when I first reviewed this application more than a year ago, is the fact that the thumbnail generation is insanely quick. Now, this has been done in the background, and at least we've got loading bars for this sort of stuff, and thumbnails are being generated quickly and live for this device. Now, say we go back to that previous photo of all of that lovely food. We can zoom in, and it's actually quite sharp. Obviously, this is a lower res version of the photo that was originally 4,000 pixels, but what we can do is find out more information about this. We can choose to, say, have on offline access, and so now this photo will always be pinned to my device, and any changes will automatically get carried over too. We can move it to other locations. We can find out more information about the photo. We can click share and then choose to share it in a number of different ways, whether we want it internet, I'm uh, sorry, um, link access only. We can say that we want passcodes or individual users to only have access and the amount of time they have access to that link for. All we have to do to go back into it is go to share and then copy the link and then that link is just what you paste to another user. It's that straightforward. Now, we can download a copy of this photo to our own device right now. So going down here, we click download. And now the file's downloaded to my local machine. I've got a local copy of it. And other options are available too. We can send a copy, apply different labels, click star. So we want it permanently there. And it's that straightforward with photos. Going back to the main options, we can look at shared items, and we still haven't created that share from earlier. Recent items that shows us just files that we've integrated with. Starred files, like the one I starred earlier on. Offline access, because we've said that this file will always be available on or offline and will be updated every time I've got internet or NAS access. Recycle bin is all the photos we've deleted. Background tasks, so when we're uploading, downloading, and more. And that's about it, as well as the ability to create labels if we so choose. And then call this one um, safe. And then boom, we can apply this label to individual files. I've come out of the app by accident. Um, and it's that straightforward. So say we want to add something to our safe label. Let's go back to the team folders. Let's choose 
a folder, any old folder will do, and then let's apply a label. Use safe, click that, and then when we go back, safe, there's our file. It's, it's very, very fast usage of these applications. Now, some um, files you may have noticed there do require codecs from time to time, codecs that I have not installed yet. So we're not gonna criticize the app too much for this, but what we will do is play this rather high quality 720p file very quickly. Let's see what it does. Not too shabby, although I'm pretty sure the video recording software has probably absolutely butchered that video you just watched. It looked fine on my screen. Why don't we go for something a little heavier? This is something this particular NAS might struggle with. Let's go for some intense 4K, UHD 4K. Oh, we're seeing a circle here. Give it a few more seconds. We'll count down from five. Four, three, two, one. Afraid not. All right, well, it had its chance, but then again, we are using video recording software, so we have to go a little easy on it in that context. Now, again, just like all the other ones, oh, we can still flick between file types as well, just like all the other apps that I've talked about previously, there are, of course, positives and negatives to this app that I'll get on just uh, just a bit. At the back end of this, we can choose between whether you want to only be able to access this application via Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi and your cell data. I would totally advise the former. Label management gives you the ability to edit those ones that you've already created. And cache management allows you to decide how much background cache is going to be utilized by this device. Now, this is important because Caching is something Synology does a lot. They do it on most of their applications, and they don't make a big song and dance of it. And it's one of the main reasons their applications are smoother than most. They have a better cache management in the background. If you do use a Synology NAS where you've got different applications running all at once, you may notice that like for like, the NAS will use a lot more memory than other NAS devices, but that is because it has smart cache management, and it's ever present both in the desktop form and the mobile form. There might even be another video in that one day. We'll look into that. Configuring passcode, make sure that you can add a four-digit passcode to this app. That means that just because someone's got access to your phone doesn't mean they've got access to the app and the individual login. And that's about it, really. The application itself is pretty damn straightforward. I can sing its praises to the end of the day, but there's no denying that now in you know mid-2019, it doesn't have a lot of the options and the synchronization abilities that are available now in the Windows client beta. Now, whether they get carried over to this application or this application will be reserved as a one portal access point, without the true synchronization options, it's a bit early to say, but that's really the only disadvantage and bad point I can see about this app. It's still incredibly user-friendly, still incredibly functional, and if you are prepared to overlook Synology's rather strange need to force you to use certain folders to lay stuff out without the ability to have a you know, management of the choice of your folders, which is something I've touched on in many videos. If you can get past that, then this could be one of the best one portal access points to your NAS out there for file management. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Do check out my other videos on mobile applications in the coming weeks. And if you have any questions or recommendations for these videos, then do let me know. But otherwise, click like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time.